So as you're watching this video, the dust has probably settled a little bit, or maybe it'll never settle. But we got to talk about Dan Campbell. Did Dan Campbell cost the Detroit Lions a Super Bowl run? That's the burning question of the day. It's going to be the burning question for the next couple of days. And what I want us to do is have the most honest, logical, and open-minded conversation that you will see on this platform about the topic at hand. I'm not going to call for anyone's job, but what I want us to do is look at each situation analytically. Let's look at it objectively. Let's have an open mind about this thing and think about what Dan Campbell was thinking. But also, what are the repercussions if you don't get a fourth down conversion in some of these spots which he went for it on fourth down? Now, I want to preface this by saying as well. If you've watched this football team at any point during the season, I always say it in all of the videos when talking about this team. It's three things that the Detroit Lions pride themselves on. It's determination, nastiness, and grit. And along with those attributes comes a level of gutsiness and pridefulness that we see displayed by Dan Campbell on the sidelines and in his decision making. I knew the whole way. That he was going to go for it on some of these fourth downs. If it's at the 50, if it's past the 50, even if sometimes it's behind the 50, it's probably going to be fourth territory because he likes to get into those fourth and short, sometimes a fourth and medium, and he's going to try his team against what you have defensively. Now, I want to take us to this first situation because I think this one doesn't draw a gripe from me. As much as some of the other decisions did, which Dan Campbell made in this football game. And the first one, it's a fourth and two. And you throw the football to Josh Reynolds. I think Ben Johnson had a great play called up. It's wide open. But Josh Reynolds drops the football. Jared Goss puts it on the money, gives it to his guy. And you don't convert in a situation like that. And we talk about repercussions. If you don't get this fourth down, what will it cost you in the long run? And I think when looking at that first situation... You're saying we're missing the potential of a three of a three score football game because it's 24 to 10 as you go for it on fourth down. If you do kick the field goal, you make it 27 to 10. And now this changes the thought process in the play calling of Kyle Shanahan. He doesn't have to go down there and get two touchdowns, but he has to go down there thinking, OK, how can we score quickly enough to save room to get another touchdown or the game time field goal? So that's one thing that I'm looking at. But I don't think that play or that drive right there really hurt you when you went downs. Now, after that, we have to understand and dive into the flow of the game a little bit. The San Francisco 49ers started to heat up on offense. Brock Purdy was starting to scramble. He was hitting on all cylinders. He's, he was hitting George Kittle. Christian McCaffrey was running the football. Then you had the touchdown by Brandon IU. So we say, okay, defensively, we got to get back on our pivot. We got to understand some of these things and get some stops in this football game if we want to bring it home. After that, you have the Jameer Gibbs fumble. Now, I'm not saying this one that we can talk about as far as Dan Campbell's late game antics because you're looking at Jameer Gibbs fumbles the football. He didn't go for it on fourth down. He didn't make to take a fake punt. This was a situation where we say, okay, it's a fumble. We chalk it up. Now, after that, you have another play. Josh Reynolds dropped the fourth down conversion. Then he dropped the third down conversion right there in the second drive after the fumble. So I'm saying, okay, we're seeing the flow of the game. Christian McCaffrey, he goes down there. He scores the football right here. You're knotted up. And then after that, you get a field goal by the San Francisco 49ers. They take the lead. It's a 27 to 24 football game. And this is where I start to have my gripe with Dan Campbell. Because like I said, we have to look at each situation analytically and objectively. All situations aren't weighed the same. But I think this one for me was weighed a little bit heavier than some of the others. You're down 27 to 24. You get into the San Francisco 49ers territory. It's about fourth and three, and you go for it once again. Now, I think right here with this, when you try to target Amara St. Brown after he just caught the football on third down, I would have took three right there. Understanding that you got Basley at kicker, you're feeling pretty solid about the situation. Worst comes to worst. The San Francisco 49ers, they go down, they kick a field goal. Actually, they scored after you didn't get the fourth down, but worst comes to worst, you're thinking, okay, they go down, they kick a field goal, we're down by six. 
But this is where we step into the flow of the game. And we look at it like sometimes the analytics of the football game, they're going to tell you one thing. OK, it's two minutes left. Maybe we should go for the two point conversion here because we can get the onside kick. Those are the type of advanced and third level stats that you can get into if you have an analytics guy on your team. But I'm thinking from a, a logical football standpoint. Our defense isn't playing the best football. Christian McCaffrey just scored. Brandon Ayuk just scored. Brock Purdy is heating up. George Kittle. These guys are leaning on an offensive line, and they're playing good football. Why would I put my defense in the situation where we don't get anything out of the drive? Now, I'm not saying because you go for it in San Francisco's territory. It's not like you went for it in your own territory and you put the defense on a short field. That's not what you're looking at right here. But it's about the mindset of it all. The momentum. A defense is getting gashed. They're getting tired. And we get into the opposing team's territory. We got to leave with some. <laughs> so I'm saying, okay, let's leave with three points right here. We tie the football game up. We potentially make it 27 to 27. So I did not like that situation. And really that decision right there to go for it on fourth down. Now let's get past that. After that, you have the San Francisco 49ers. They go down. They make it 34 to 24. They get another touchdown. Okay. We say we come back with it. We get another touchdown. We make it 31 to 34. But let's time out right quick. I don't understand why after you ran the football with Dave Montgomery, we call that time out right there. These are where we have the conversations about what is the best decision in a late game situation. And I think the way that it actually happened, you had Fred Warner make a big time tackle down there in the red zone. They stopped David Montgomery. Actually, they tackled him for a loss behind the scrimmage on the goal line. All we got to do is get back on the ball extremely fast. I didn't see a sense of urgency. I didn't see an offensive line in a team that had a play call already. And I think that was probably the problem right there. You got to say, okay, if we run this ball right here with David Montgomery, we got to have a play call in our back pocket. And I don't think they had a play call in their back pocket. So that's something where I say, situationally, as a head coach, we got to practice these things all week. If we come into this situation, we know if I get into a situation, I have the clock running. I don't want to burn the timeout. I have to have a play call ready. I don't think they have one ready. So they call the timeout. They eventually score on fourth and goal where Jamison Williams gets the touchdown. But now you're relying on an onside kick. And we know the probability of onside kicks. So with that being said, I think you look at that second decision where you go for it on downs. You're down by three in the football game. San Francisco, they go score. And then that last possession when you call the timeout where I think you really could have just got back on the football and had a play. Had a play call ready. You got to think before you call that run, you got to say, OK, there's two ways this thing can go. Either we can punch it in with David Montgomery or if we don't get it right here, I got to have Jared Goff in his headset. And know, OK, this is what we go to. This is what we check to get the, get the team back on the line of scrimmage. We're going to call this if it doesn't go right. Those are the types of things where you say late game management coaching. Now, I want to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Did Dan Campbell actually cost the Detroit Lions a Super Bowl run? Like I said, there's a lot of events which transpired up to this point. You look at Brock Purdy and how that offense started to hum. You look at how the offense for the Detroit Lions got a bit stagnant, although they scored, but it was a little bit too late and you had to depend on the onside kick. I want to know what you think in the comments, and I also want to know what does this mean for the future? It's not easy getting back to these NFC championships. I think this is a team that has a lot of young talent. You look at Laporta, Brian Branch, Jameer Gibbs, Jack Campbell. We can continue to go on and on and on, but it has to sting because a lot of teams had a lot of young talent. They thought, OK, if we lose this football game, we'll be back. But it's just not that simple in the game of football. Detroit Lions fans, you, you're not you're not going to feel good about this loss or you know you're not going to feel good about any loss but this one in particular where it seemed like the Detroit Lions had a football game won and all they had to do was hold it off they were running the football extremely well they had a lot of momentum and the San Francisco 49ers due to some part mishaps by the Detroit Lions came back into this football game that's gonna do it for today's show I want to know where we at with Dan Campbell where are we at with some of these decisions that he made in the second half Thank you for watching as always. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And now, yeah.